What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and continue learning about the best classic English dishes, part two. If you have not seen part one, feel free to check that out or stay right here where you are in part two. Perfectly fine as well. But in part one, I started learning about some very delicious looking English dishes, to be honest. I mean, a lot of it looked very delicious, if not a bit different to what I'm used to. I mean, there were some other things here that maybe are just a bit misunderstood. I haven't had any of this stuff. I'm a little skeptical of a few things. But on the whole, it was actually really fun to learn about. We learned about, what are these? These are pasties? Pasties? Paste? Pasty? Which is like this fun little breaded, uh breaded bread, <laughs> breaded bread, with stuff on the inside, meaty, savory stuff on the inside, which actually looks like Americans would love this. We should probably have this. What else was there? The full English breakfast. Oh, let me see if I can find a picture of the full English breakfast. Yes, this is the one they were having, which looks amazing. Although I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me here was getting past the pudding, the, the black pudding which is simply not a thing in the United States and learning about what is in it, like the ingredients, kind of threw me for a loop. It's just so different. I, it's, it sounds like one of those things you have to grow up with to, to not be completely terrified of it. And <laughs> we, we left off learning about the cream tea. Yes, the tea. Uh, they used this term, cream tea, I don't know exactly what that means, if it's just regular tea, or if it's because it's tea with items with cream on it, or I'm not exactly sure, but it's tea and there's cream, and that's about where we left off, where they were trying the tea. Oh, very fun that I learned, uh, in particular, the Americans in this video experiencing all of this, they, they headed to this little tea shop that's inside of a convenience store. It's like, I was wondering, is that normal in England or, or the UK to just have places you can get tea and have some tea time located in, in sort of random public places like a convenience store? I, I've never, ever experienced anything like that or, or even knew about that. So that was really fun to learn about, too. And that, that's where we left off. So I think they're starting to, to sort of put cream or spread stuff on their, what are these, cripes, crips, or scones, not cripes, scones. <laughs> Either way, let's see what we have here. Oh, this looks good. So when we were told about cream tea, people were arguing whether or not you should put the cream on and then the jam, or the jam and then the cream. So we- The cream? Wait a minute, I've heard a debate like this with tea. Do you milk, put the milk in first or second? Is there also a, a cream and jam debate going on as well? Done both. Yeah. I went with the cream and then the jam and I kind of ended up with a sloppy mess, which is- It is. It is a cream and jam debate. I did not know this was a thing. This is fantastic. <laughs> is there a proper way to do this? There's gotta be a, a, pop, a most popular way to do this. So I didn't even realize with the uh, the pastries they have, I think they must be scones, right? They look like English muffins, what we'd call English muffins here in America. But you spread cream, I'm not sure what this cream is, and then jam, or you can do jam then cream. Is there any way to make it look perfect? Or how would the order affect the taste? Or I guess it, it impacts what uh, directly touches your taste buds first, but you can really get quite scientific with this, huh? Just could be good. Yeah. I don't know. I'm alright with it. I think this might be a good way to put the jam on first and the cream and yeah. it all stays put. Oh. I think this is the right way. I think this... She, did she do it the right way? Jam then cream. It does make it look a bit less sloppy. This might... Is this the right way? It feels like it probably is. Like what they're saying? This is the way they ultimately told us you should do it. Yeah. Oh, that's how you're supposed to do it. Okay. The cream makes it, you guys. It it's mixes like, with the jam. It makes it like a little like cream saver or something. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but a cream saver is like a little candy that used to be popular in the U.S. Not so much. I'm confused by this cream because I'm guessing it's not cream cheese. 
like we'd have here in the United States. What is the flavor of just cream? It's I, I'm trying to think of what this is. For, it's not frosting, like on a cake. It doesn't seem like cream cheese, just cream. It's not butter. I'm a little confused by the cream, but intrigued. <laughs> the cream tastes like a buttery whipped cream. Oh! It's magical. Thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you. I'm so glad they actually said that. Buttery whipped cream. That sounds great. I've never heard something described like that, but that sounds great. Okay. Why why don't we have this? I'm, we must. Maybe we do have this in the United States, but it's just not a thing because tea is not a thing. Maybe this is something we have somewhere in the back of the dairy section of the store. I don't know. The scone by itself is a bit dry, but once you put the cream and the jam on it, it makes it like a moist delight. Wow. Here, see, yeah, they're in a convenience store, but there is a little place for having tea. Very fun. Uh, is this, <laughs> is this typically what you have with tea? Ev like, and I assume tea is something a lot of people have every day in Britain. And are you also having this sort of jam cream pastry as well? Seems like a really fun sort of wholesome time to like have every day. It'd be nice. We, we don't have anything quite like it. Well, that was delicious and super relaxing. Yeah. We were just talking relaxing. how if we lived here, we would probably have to do that every day. It's such a... Yeah, they're, oh my gosh, they're literally thinking the same way I'm thinking. That's so funny. Yeah, it's like, this is something you might do every day, and how nice would that be? Man. Delightful yeah. little afternoon. Yeah, and that the atmosphere in there was amazing. Yeah. It's like the perfect tea room. And since it's attached to a convenience store, we managed to get some provisions for yeah. the rest of our week here. Yeah, it's, like, it's funny, too, because in America, if, if you know convenience stores in America, it's like, if they told you there was a tea room in the back, I would think they're trying to kidnap me. Like, I would think, I'd be like, I'm not going into this back room for you to give me some tea, whatever that means. But apparently, this is just a normal thing. <laughs> For our final meal of the day, we came up to Windermere, which is actually in the Lake District, and we're going to be trying fish and chips and shepherd's pie. Let's oh my gosh, perfect! Okay, fish and chips. I should have realized that was going to be in this video. That is the most English, the most British dish I can think of. Like, I can't even explain how English that sounds. When, when Americans think of England or just the UK in general and a food item, well, we think of tea, for one thing, but we think of fish and chips. It's almost like a stereotype Americans have. Uh, but, hey, that, that's why it's on this list. I think it's genuinely something that's very, very, very popular in England, right? Let's go get some dinner. Oh, wow. Let's not skip over how beautiful this town is. Dinner. Yeah, this is also... This video isn't, like, about... English, small English, cute little towns, but that's just what happens. That's exactly where they are. You don't find historical sort of architecture like this, this style in the United States. So this is just so cool to even look at where they are. <laughs> and by the water, the Albert. Oh, is this a pub or a restaurant? Hmm. Well, um, I, I learned like a lot of pubs have a restaurant part, a, a restaurant section. So maybe this is a pub and a restaurant, actually. Wow. So perfect. Oh, wow, that looks Whoa. interesting. Wow. Okay, so I, I've heard of Shepherd's Pie. That's also something that's not, it doesn't exist in the United States, but I've at some point learned about shepherd's pie. I forget exactly what's in it, but it looks very, so many of these food items, these classic uh, English dishes are so, look so savory and like comforting. We call it comfort food in America with the mashed potatoes and like meats and gravies and that kind of stuff. It's just... So cozy, so nice. Oh my gosh, oh. it's all crusty and crunchy. Ooh. 
So it looks like there's peas and carrots and lamb. Lamb. And then there's crusty mashed potatoes on top. Oh, that sounds so good. Except, I don't think I've ever had lamb. Is lamb common in England? Or, I, I have not heard that one before because we just eat beef and chicken in the United States. That's like almost 99% of the time. But not lamb. I don't think I've ever had lamb. I'm scared it's gonna burn me. <laughs> Sounds very good though. Well, hot. Well, except when it's burning you. <laughs> except when it's burning the roof of your mouth off. Well, that's about as delicious as it gets. Wow. That is like what was on the inside of the, the pasty, but okay. in, I guess, casserole form. <laughs> it, did, it does remind me of the pasty, like these meaty vegetable like things with sauce and this one has mashed potatoes and it sounds really good. Like really, really good. Uh, I, I actually wish we had some of these things. And it's glorious. And this is the fish and chips. This thing just falls apart. Holy cow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, no. Dude. What kind of fish, like, it comes with the fish and chips? Uh, cause it, I, I've never really thought about what the fish actually is. What kind of fish? Cause in America, we don't eat fish very much. Sometimes you see like a salmon on the menu or something healthy that I never would dream of touching. But this does not look like the healthy kind of fish. It looks like fried or something. And <laughs> it's very interesting to me. Uh, and just totally not, not a dish that exists in America at all. Like at least the shepherd's pie and pasty are something that is in the family of what we enjoy here. But the fish and chips is just totally from outer space to me. <laughs> that looks awesome, you guys. Let's give me a nice little bite here. Oh, wow. Should I just try it straight or with a sauce? I just want to try it straight to start with. Sorry. Oh, straight. I doubt people oh, awesome. eat it straight. You're probably gonna have some sauce. I don't eat fish and chips often, so take this with a grain of salt, but this is the best fish and chips I've ever had. Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Much better than what they do in the States, no doubt. Oh, they don't. <laughs> Where on earth in the States do you get fish and chips? Like, am I missing something? That I, I don't think I've ever once in my entire life. Now, granted, I've only lived in like a couple of states, like in the United States, mostly on the east, eastern United States. So maybe there's something I'm missing, but I have never run into an option for fish and chips. And it sounds like that might be a good thing, because according to this American, it's not good in the United States. So there you go. It is so, it completely falls apart. It's awesome. Yeah. Super warm, delightful. I'm not sure exactly how they go about breading and frying this thing, but if you look oh, at- Oh, it is fried. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that crunchy crust, that bready crust. I've wondered what that is too. And what's that goop in that cup on the side of the plate as well? What are you supposed to do with that goo in that metal cup? <laughs> Got it, it looks huge, but it's actually not that big because there's like this kind of layer of air here. Okay. You rip it apart, you can see like there's not that much yeah. kind of batter on there. But it's still really wide. Yeah. I'm impressed. So it looks yeah. like a ton of food, but it's actually pretty easy to, to eat this whole thing. So okay. what I'm eating here is North Atlantic cup. Americans would not mind if it was a ton of food. Just saying. Most Americans would be happy. Most Americans would be peeling back the bread and be like, hey, this isn't all completely solid. I thought this was bigger. Uh, and what we read is that now you can't just say fish and chips in most places. You have to say what the actual type of fish is. So you oh. know the kind of fish that you're getting. I guess it makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was wondering about this. What kind of fish is in the fish and chips? I guess it can be a variety of fish. I'm, I'm, I'm finding out. I am hearing now. You makes know, a lot of sense. cod, haddock, whatever it is. Cod? I heard cod. I heard her say a couple. You know the kind of fish that you're getting. I guess it makes sense. Yeah, so, it makes know, a lot of sense. Getting cod, haddock, whatever it is. Haddock? Never heard of it. I've heard of cod. Matt over here got the steak and mushroom pie and I just tried it. It is absolutely awesome. That sounds pretty good. amazing. Yeah. The steak literally just like falls apart in your mouth. Yeah. It's so good. That's another thing England and I think the UK has in general is these pies, these meat, these savory and meat pies. That's a whole like thing that simply does not exist in America that I do think we would really like. Because it's similar to stuff we like. 
It tastes like a, something straight out of like a crock pot. Like I just, it just like juicy and it's just perfect. Yeah. I'm not crazy about the mushy peas, but I think that's mostly because I don't the, really like peas. <laughs> the mushy peas. Is that what it was? Oh my gosh. I was wondering what that, that bowl of goo on his plate is. Mushy peas. <laughs> In general. I just laugh at the name because... That's not a name we say. That's not an item we say in the United States. So it's funny to me. The mushy peas. They gotta be mushy. But I can appreciate it. It tastes good for what it is, for okay. sure. It's very pea-like. It's very <laughs> peaky. Ah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wonder. I assume it's just like peas that have been mushed up. What do we have we here? We're back at our Airbnb. Today turned out to be more delicious, I think, oh than gosh. we could have imagined. So good. It. And there yeah. are so many dishes that we didn't try. Yeah, still. we had a huge list and tons oh of gosh. recommendations. So these were just the ones that sounded really good and sounded yeah. really traditional. So make sure to let us know in the comments below if there are some dishes we missed that we have to try. And also let us know what is your favorite dish to try in England if you've been here, if you live here, let us know in the comments below. Wow, there you have it. Yeah, I, I, I don't doubt it that there is a ton of classic English dishes that they didn't get to. Uh, but this was so enjoyable to just learn about these. Several of these I'd never even heard of, which was a real treat. And I don't, I didn't know much about the, even the fish and chips, to be honest. So I like what fish it is or how it's made. So that was even cool. So I enjoyed this quite a bit. This was by The Endless Adventure. And I gotta give this video a like, cause this was great. Very, a nice authentic look through it. Uh, some fellow Americans point of view at these classic English dishes and most of this 99% of this looked great like honestly looked amazing like these are all things I would try and I'm not terribly adventurous when it comes to food like as I think a lot of Americans <laughs> fall into that because we eat a lot of the same stuff it's in it's very processed food and yeah <laughs> putting my health debacles aside, uh, this was super enjoyable. I think the only thing I remain skeptical of is the black pudding or blood pudding. The pudding. Uh, but I still feel like that's something you gotta try to, to, before you pass judgment on it. But I'll pass judgment on everything else in that it looked honestly really, really delicious and good and very authentic. So I enjoyed this quite a bit. Anyway. If you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment, perhaps with your favorite classic English dish. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to British culture and things from Britain I have never seen before or learned about, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.